Last year, I released my first ever mobile game, Dino Adventures, and finally wanted to relax after three months of development. But then, this happened. Yeah, my game was broken. A lot of users were seeing an empty blue screen when starting the game. Android users were losing all their progress when they closed the game, including coins, high scores, and unlocks. A special release day character was not appearing, along with other minor bugs and complaints about the difficulty. So, what happened? As soon as I started receiving bug reports, I got back to work. I opened a bug channel on my Discord server so users can report any bugs they found. I also went through the comments on my TikTok and made a list of bugs that users were seeing. I started by trying to fix the bug causing the blue screen, but this took some time since it wasn't happening in the Unity editor or my iOS and Android devices. Eventually, I was able to reproduce it by commenting out this function call, which was responsible for initializing all the elements in the scene, such as the background, the ground, and the player. And so I realized this function was somehow not being called. To fix this, I decided to call this reset function every time the active scene changed, which should correctly initialize all the elements in the scene every time the user starts the game. I tested this out and it seemed to be working fine, so I moved on to the next bug. So I tackled the error causing users to lose all their progress on Android devices. This was a pretty dumb one because I realized I had accidentally left this function in that was called when the application is closed and basically creates a new empty player data object and saves it, overriding the player's actual data. After looking at the Unity documentation, I found that this function was not called in iOS devices, which explained why only Android users were seeing this bug. So I simply removed this function and now the player data is saved correctly, including all their coins, high scores, and unlocked characters. Once the game breaking bugs were fixed, I looked into why the release date character was not appearing for some users. Now for this feature, I was using a hard coded date for the dyno and was doing a comparison with the system date time to determine if it was shown in the shop. After hours of trying to figure out why it wasn't working, I found that the system date time would return the date format based on the user's locale. So the comparison would work for this date format, but not for any of these. To fix this, I explicitly gave it a date format and updated the available dates to give users one week to unlock the dyno. So now everyone should be able to access it regardless of where they live. Next, I moved on to some of the other minor bugs, including this one where pausing the game would make the player jump and would sometimes cause them to die when they unpause. To fix this, I only allowed user input on the bottom half of the screen. There's probably a better solution for this, but it seemed to be working fine. And finally, I adjusted the difficulty settings as there were sometimes back-to-back -back obstacles that were almost impossible to get through. After two days of fixing bugs, I submitted the patch version to both the App Store and the Google Play Store. But then I realized updates and patches also went through the same review process, which meant that the users would have the broken game until the update was approved. Eventually though, it got approved and the bugs were fixed. Even though the game had a rough start, I received a lot of good feedback and learned a lot from this process, so I wanted to share a few things that I learned from my first release. Number 1. Playtesting is a thing. Now this one should be pretty obvious, but since my game was a simple endless runner, I didn't think it was necessary and was too lazy to go through the playtesting process. But I realized a lot of these bugs would have been discovered if I had others playing and testing the game out. And playtesting also allows you to receive feedback and suggestions for improvement from players. Next, communicate with your audience and be honest. As soon as I started receiving bug reports, I tried to reply to everyone in my Discord, TikTok comments, and app reviews. I let them know that I was aware of the bugs, was actively working on fixing them, and would be pushing an update soon. Most of my audience knew this was my first game, so they were pretty understanding. And because of this, I received a lot of positive reviews, with users even stating that the game had bugs, but they were aware I was fixing them. And finally, don't rush to release a game if you don't feel that it's ready. I regularly documented my game progress on TikTok, and every video I would receive comments asking when it was going to be released. And I thought I was missing out on potential users by not releasing the game earlier. So if you have second thoughts about the overall status of the game and haven't tested it enough, don't be afraid to push the release date. At the end, even though the release didn't go as expected and was a bit disappointing, I learned a lot throughout this process that will be helpful in my future projects. The game eventually received over 5,000 downloads across all platforms and almost 5 stars on both the App Store and the Google Play Store. So I would consider it a success for my first game. If you haven't seen the video about how I made the game in the first place, make sure to check that out as well. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you next time.